worship him because he's a God of your deliverance. He's a God of your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Worship him, bless his holy name, because there's none like him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Raise up your voices wherever you, you are. Yes, wherever you have chosen to stand to bless his holy name, wherever you have chosen to kneel down on your prayer altar tonight, worship him because he's God. He's the Lord of your breakthrough. He's the Lord of your salvation. He's the Lord of your deliverance. He's the God of your best through. Praise his holy name. His Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is him who delivered Israel out of the wilderness. Out of the seven trials they went through. In the wilderness is why he was God. In hunger, he was God. Yes, in, in suffering, he was God. Yes, in thirsty, he was God. They cried to him. He delivered them out of all those. Yes, he's the same God. He's delivering you tonight in the name of Jesus. He gave them a breakthrough. Yes, they crossed the Red Sea. That was a mighty breakthrough. And tonight the Lord is giving you a mighty breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Worship him. Yes, a mighty breakthrough. When they were to Jericho, Jericho was another test. Jericho was another challenge. Ahead of them, it was a huge mountain. But the Lord gave them a breakthrough because of worship. Yes, because of faith. Tonight, trust the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. Yes, with all your mind. He's giving you a breakthrough. Surrender to Him is God. He's the God of your salvation. Yes, He's the God of your healing tonight. He's the God who answers your prayers. He's the God who takes you through the mountains, the huge mountains of death. Surrender to him, the huge mountains of broken relationships. Yes, in the huge mountains of persecutors. Yes, it's Lord. He never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The way he delivered Israel is the way he delivered his children, the apostles, out of persecution and tribulation if he was God. Yes, right, surrender to him. He's going to take you through the challenges you have in your family, the huge rejection. It is a huge mountain. That rejection you are going through from your own sufferings. Surrender to the Lord. Surrender to Jesus Christ. As you worship him, as you bless his holy name, he's going to, to pull down every stronghold. He's going to break every yoke. Yes, he's going to lift away the burden. He's going to run away that heavy burden on your shoulder. And your life is not going to be the same again. We worship the God of breakthrough. We worship the God of power. Yes, the God of healing. Yes, the God of miracles. Yes, all through his strength, he has been a God of miracles. He who performed the miracle in Moses' life by speaking to him through fire, in the same God who is speaking to you tonight, through fire, and his fire is going to consume every witchcraft, consume every fear, consume every sickness, and your life is not going to be the same again. Bless his holy name as you surrender to him. Yes, bless his holy name as you surrender to him. Speak to your God. Start on his promises, he says, go unto me. Hallelujah, your answer. I answer, call upon his name. Call upon his name. Jesus Christ is his name. Call upon him, he's going to answer. He listens to your cry. He listens to your prayer. And your life is not going to be the same again. We pray that tonight, Lord, your children shall experience a mighty move of the Spirit. A mighty move of the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, I need you tonight. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, yes, Lord. Holy Spirit. 
mention it. And uh, he's a twin brother. I thank God because we we are twins in faith and we glorify God. Hey, Dad, are you already on? Please unmute and uh, ensure that uh, your video is on. Hello. Because we are expecting we are from you. And I know tonight many barriers are going to be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Dr. Can you hear me? Yes, are you on? Yes. Hallelujah, yes, yes. I can see you. I want to hear your voice. Yes. How are yes. you? Hallelujah, I, can, I am beginning to hear you. Can you hear me? I am waiting you. Can you hear me? Yes, we are hearing you very well. Okay, so let us go for the word. I thank God for worship. Uh, that was a very wonderful worship because the Bible says that God dwells in the praises of his people. And so I'd like to say that this, the theme you gave me is a very nice one. Uh, the prayer that can break bondages. I'd like to inform all of you who are watching this broadcast that a fervent, desperate, aggressive, and militaristic prayer is the one which can break bondages. And so I want us to turn to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, and we shall bring, read and share the whole chapter briefly because time is running out. A prayer that can break bondages. And uh, you remember that after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, most of the disciples were empowered on the day of Pentecost by the Holy Spirit. Men and women who were weak, men like Peter who denied Jesus, men like Thomas who doubted Jesus, men like the apostles who ran away and went to the lake to, 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 to be with Peter, and they went fishing when they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Uh, they courageously began to see Jesus Christ in a new way. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that Jesus said, wait, I will give you power in Acts chapter one, verse eight. And on the day of Pentecost, they got that power. And because they performed miracles, they started healing the sick, they started uh, raising the dead, they started uh, casting out demons, they started doing an amazing work in the name of the Lord. Politicians were threatened. And because they were threatened, a man who was called uh, King Herod, united with the Jews, the Pharisees and Sadducees who had crucified Jesus, they said these men and women must stop. So they started persecution, persecuting Christians. And King Herod killed James and beheaded him. He arrested so many people and started killing Christians. And in chapter 12, we are told that he arrested Peter, 
who was the head of the apostles. And he was going to cut his head off on his birthday, which was coming. And so when Peter was arrested, the Bible says that the apostles and other Christians, they met in John Mary's home, Mary the mother of John, and prayed a fervent prayer. And the fervent prayer is the prayer that, that I really suggest that it will break every bondage. So Peter was put in jail, he was in bondage, he was in the gallows, but the church prayed for him a fervent prayer. E Joshara, Niva Jeteshara Yarwata Migongo, Omrunyankori Ruchiga, the breaker of mountains. E Joshara, Omruchiga, Niva Jetaru Kura Mitanga, the one that uproots. But in English, it is called an aggressive, desperate, militaristic prayer, militaristic prayer. It is called fervent prayer. It is a prayer without ceasing. It is not our Father in heaven, allowed be thy name, and then you sleep, and then you say the grace in the morning. Oh, I forgot to say the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is not Hail Mary, Mother of God, Erepas. It is not you that are there, oh, Erepas. It's not may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I would like to really uh, challenge all of you to know that this is the prayer that can break your uh, mountains. And I want to talk about its characteristics. First of all, it is a prayer from the heart. It comes from your heart, inside your heart. When you are pouring out your heart to God, it is not written down. It is not taught. It comes as a prayer of desperation. It's a prayer of desperation that comes from your heart. It is like the prayer Hannah prayed when she didn't have a child. It is a prayer that Daniel prayed when he was in the den of lions. It is a prayer that uh, Nehemiah prayed when he was going to rebuild the temple. It is a prayer that we see the apostles praying when Peter was in jail. So it is a prayer from the heart. Number two, it is a, a prayer of desperation. You are desperate to be delivered. Number three, it is an aggressive prayer. You are angry at the status quo. You are angry at the position you are in. You are angry with the devil who came to steal, to kill, and destroy. So it is aggressive. It is also a travailing prayer. It's a prayer where you don't stop until things happen. Kayanja calls it push. Pray until things happen. You don't resign, you don't retire. It's a prayer without ceasing. You pray it when you are walking. You pray it when you are in bed. You pray it when you are driving. You pray it when you are, until your problem is resolved. It's a prayer that never gives up. It's a prayer that never resigns. It is a prayer that is consistent. It is a prayer that pushes the heart of God. It's a prayer full of tears and groanings. 
It is a prayer full of many, many fastings, fasting food. It is a prayer that may take an overnight. It is a prayer that may take one or two people. It may be united prayer. It may be personal prayer, but it is a prayer that is aggressive, that is desperate. It is that kind of prayer. It's also a prayer that is uh, 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 charismatic where spiritual gifts are in operation. It's a prayer where prophetic prayer comes. It is a prayer where uh, 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 speaking in tongues come. It is a prayer which is very, very serious prayer, a spiritual warfare prayer. And that prayer, it is a scripture-centered prayer. It is a prayer that is centered on the scripture where you remind God of what he promised. It's a prayer that claims the promise. It's a prayer that says, Lord, you said that no weapon forged against us shall prosper. So these enemies that are fighting against me, they are not going to prosper. <coughs> it's a prophetic prayer that speaks to stones, that speaks to mountains, that speaks to demons, that speaks to situation, that speaks. It's a prophetic prayer. Like what you hear, you, you mountain standing before us, Babel, who are you? You shall be lowered down. It's a prayer that pulls down strongholds. It's a prayer that pulls down principalities and powers. It's a prayer that releases liquid fire. It is a prayer that is courageous. You don't fear. It is a prayer that when you pray it, even some people think you are mad. Some people think you are crazy. Like Hannah, when he prayed, she was rolling on the ground and the high priest thought she was drunk. It's a prayer that is not religious. It's a prayer that is not denominational. It is a prayer that is not racial. It is a prayer that does not respect age, that does not respect gender. It is a prayer that comes from the heart of a man and a woman of God. It's a prayer that you are pouring out to somebody you trust, Jesus Christ, our superpower. That prayer is an elephant prayer, so big that nobody can comprehend it. It's a giant prayer. That prayer is a lion's prayer. It roars like a lion, courageous prayer like a lion. Commanding prayer, you command demons to go and they leave. It is a graph prayer that is so high that it can touch the gates of heaven. It is a prayer that is very, very, very powerful. And that is the prayer that the disciples prayed because Herod had guns. Herod had weapons, he had the army, he had all the weapons that were needed at that time to crush any group. Herod was very powerful. Herod was a king. Herod was coming from a family which was terroristic. And the Bible says that he raised the hand against the church. And he killed James who was the, 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 the one in charge of the Jerusalem prayer. So my brothers and sisters, a prayer that they can break any bondage is that kind of prayer which these guys, men and women, prayed that touched the heart of God. So it is an evangelistic prayer that you can even pray evangelistically and people are saved and delivered. It is a prophetic prayer that the gifts of prophecy are released. 
It is also a pastoral prayer that the power of pastoral prayer can be made and, and men and women are restored back to their faith. It is an apostolic prayer where you command things and things happen. And so this is the prayer they prayed. And I want to conclude with the, what the results that came from that prayer. Number one, the Bible says that when they prayed that prayer, it was a prayer of fasting for three days. It was like an Easter fast. Three dry fasting days of nine people in Mary's home, who was the mother of John. So when they prayed in Acts chapter 12, number one, they said that the angels of God, the angel of God came and stood by Peter. So when you pray that aggressive, desperate prayer, the angels of God will come to your aid. And I want to pray that God will help you. I don't know which bondage you are in, whether you are bound by a curse, whether you are bound by a demonic covenant, whether you are bound by a trace of him, whether you are bound by witchcraft, whether you are bound by uh, soul ties, whether you are bound by animal spirits, whether you are bound by image me, whether you are bound by, I don't know what bondages you are in, but let me tell you, if you pray that fervent, aggressive, and desperate prayer, the angels of God will come to your aid. And when the angels come, Superpower takes over, and every power standing before you is completely annihilated by the power of God. And tonight, I pray for all of you who have been crying and crying for a long time. Let the angels take over in the name of Jesus. Let the angels take over to break your curse. Let the angels take over to break every demonic covenant. Let the angels take over whether you are in a bottle. Let the angels take over in the name of Jesus who died and rose again. Let the angels uproot. Let the angels demolish. Let the angels break down. Let the angels Pull down every Jericho war in your life in the name of Jesus. And the angels of God are ready to go to your family and break every power that has been hovering around your life in the name of Jesus. Secondly, the Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that light shone in the whole priest. It was around midnight on the third day, and light came in the whole prison. Every darkness in the prison was completely diminished. You know, when the light of God comes in a situation, every darkness will disappear. Because they prayed the fervent prayer, it released the light in every corner of darkness. And I want to challenge you and pray for you today that let every darkness in your life in the name of Jesus. Let the light of God go into your family. Let the light of God go into every corner of your life. Let the light of God completely destroy every darkness in the name of Jesus so that you may arise. The Bible says arise and shine your light has come 
and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, whoever it is. So an aggressive, desperate prayer will bring light into your family, will bring light into your marriage, will bring light into your education. So every spiritual darkness, every academic darkness that you or stay in your marriage, every political darkness that you shall never win in an election, every demonic darkness in your life, in your family, let the fire, the light of God come into your darkness in the name of Jesus. Let every darkness in your family let the light of God come in the name of the Lord. Meanwhile, people were praying in the house, but light was going into prison. The angel went into prison. Light went into prison. The, those who were praying didn't know that God was working. So when you pray an aggressive, desperate, fervent prayer, Ishara yarwata migongo ninge yarukura mitanga I tell you the light of God will shine in the tunnel and your family will experience the light of God Hallelujah Number 3 Number 3 The Bible says that the angel lifted Peter from the ground Peter was Beaten so badly, he was knocked down on the ground, groaning, and uh, some versions say he was even sleeping. But when the, when the people prayed that fervent, aggressive prayer, then the angel touched his shoulders and lifted him up. And I tell you, my brother, my sister, the devil has hit you down so badly. Some of you are groaning. Some of you are wounded. I pray that you pray a prayer, aggressive, desperate prayer. The Holy Spirit will send angels. They are going to lift you. You will be lifted up. The Son of God is here to raise you up. And he said, arise, Peter, arise. Arise. Peter was preparing for his death. We pray our relatives, our friends, our situations that have pushed us down. An aggressive, desperate, fervent prayer will lift us up. When you pray for somebody in the hospital, you rise up. <coughs> Excuse me, when you pray for the sick, they will rise up. When you pray for the dead, they, they will rise up. When you pray that prayer for those who are demon possessed, they will rise up. When you pray, those whom the devil has put in jail, has bound, they will raise up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So pray that aggressive, desperate prayer. Number five, the Bible says that when Peter stood up, Every chain that was binded and broken by the power that was at uh, Mary's home. And let me tell you, when you pray in the best of house of prayer, every chain in people's homes, every chain in people's jobs, every chain in people's lives, is a good to come in sinner, guys. They will be broken. In the name of Jesus who died and rose again. 
The chains that was tying Peter to 16 soldiers, chains on the legs, chains on the neck, chains on the waist, chains on the, in the arms, they were all broken by themselves through the power of God. I tell you, my binding you, binding your brothers and sisters, so many chains binding Asia, binding Africa, binding Europe, binding America, so many chains binding Uganda, binding Kampala, binding Shema. If you pray an aggressive, desperate prayer, every chain will be broken. In the name of Jesus, and I speak to you today, every chain binding your marriage, be broken in the name of Jesus. Every be broken in the name of Jesus. Every binding your degree, binding your harvest. Let that chain be broken by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. So when we pray an aggressive, desperate, fervent prayer, the chains that are binding our mothers and our fathers, the chains of witchcraft, the chains of generational curses, the chains of decrees and proclamations against you, they will be broken in the name of Jesus. Strongholds will be pulled down in the name of Jesus. Principalities will be broken in the name of Jesus. Powers will be broken in the name of Jesus. Chains from our chairs will be broken from our lives. Will be broken. Chains from a machine will be broken. Chains from a mahembe will be broken. Chains from a mangwa from Yavinji will be broken. Chains from Chabujimbi, chains from Stagata, chains from Munyaruguru Katerera, chains from Kasesena Congo will be broken in the name of Jesus if you pray a fervent prayer. The apostles prayed a fervent prayer. Chains were broken in prison in the name of the Lord. Number six, the Bible says that Peter, all the wounds that were on Peter, these Roman uh, soldiers commanded by King Herod, they had beaten Peter so thoroughly, his body was full of wounds. The moment the angel of God raised him up and the chains were broken, all his wounds were healed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you pray a fervent, desperate prayer, the Bible says that you shall be healed in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the prayer in James chapter 5, that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Is there any one of you who is sick? Any one of you who is not well? Call religious leaders when they come. They will anoint you with oil and lay hands on you. And every sickness shall be healed. So, my brothers and sisters, Every wound on Peter was completely healed. I don't know some of you are wounded. Some you are wounded by rape, you are wounded, they defied you, wounded financially, wounded by your parents, wounded by your relatives. Wounds of teenagehood, wounds of adulthood, wounds of marriage, political wounds, financial wounds. 
every wound that you have on your heart, you have been crying for a long time. You have been bleeding inside. If you pray a fervent, desperate, aggressive prayer in the name of Jesus, that prayer will heal every wound. And today, I pray for you. Let those wounds on your heart be healed in the name of Jesus. Let every wound be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed from wounds of being raped. Be healed from wounds of being abandoned and being rejected. Be healed from wounds of not getting a job by your boyfriend. So the wounds of Peter were healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number seven, the Bible says that the angel of God told Peter, now dress up. They had removed all his clothes and put it in one corner. Uh, but, and Peter was naked, Peter was ashamed, Peter was humiliated. The angels of God said, dress up, put on your a gown, put on your belt, put on your shoes, put on. A fervent, desperate prayer will dress you up. There are so many people whom the devil has stripped naked, like the brothers of Joseph who stripped their brother naked. Like the soldiers of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, like the soldiers of Herod who stripped Peter naked. And nakedness brings shame. So there are some of you who have been ashamed. Some of you who have been embarrassed. Some of you who have been humiliated. Arise, arise, arise. The Lord is going to dress you up. Peter was re-clothed. He was dressed up. In Malachi chapter 3, when the devil was saying that uh, uh, Joshua was wearing filthy rags, the Lord said, don't you know that he with his royal garments and crown him put a crown on his head as a high priest. I want to tell you that when you pray, every person that has been ashamed, every person that has been ashamed by their parents, ashamed by their husbands, ashamed by their uncles, Abustan is a Jeremusha, Ababan to Bahemiro Kahemuka, it is over his Nazakujeka. Stana Jura from Kaisa Jeka. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is going to cross you up. The angels dressed Peter up and said, Put on your shoes because this is not the end. You are going back to ministry. And today I declare that the time of shame is over. In the name of Jesus, the time of shame is over. Pray an aggressive, desperate prayer. The Lord will put on a new garment of you. The Bible says in Isaiah, beautiful ashes. God is going to give you beautiful ashes. He's going to give you a crown of righteousness, a splendor. And you shall be popular again, and you shall smile again, because a fervent prayer will break the shame. And I want to tell you that fervent prayers, fervent desperate prayers, they break every shame that has been put around you. Number nine, number nine, when they prayed, 
a fervent, desperate, aggressive prayer. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord told Peter, follow me. Follow me. So when we pray an aggressive, desperate prayer, our relatives will follow Jesus. Our friends will be set free. <coughs> Excuse me, he said, follow me. And I want to tell you, a prayer, aggressive, desperate, fervent, will make you follow Jesus. Will make you focus on Jesus. The angel said, look at me, Peter, follow me. Don't look at the soldiers. Don't look at the gates. Follow me. And I want to tell you that when we pray a fervent, charismatic, evangelistic prayer, the Bible says that men and men and men and women will be set free from chains. They will follow Jesus. Do you want your parents to follow Jesus? Do you want your brothers and sisters to follow Jesus? Do you want your members of staff to follow Jesus? Do you want Uganda to follow Jesus? Then pray this aggressive, desperate, fervent prayer. It will break the hearts of men. It will melt every pride. It will pull down every stronghold binding people. It will destroy demons and other powers. And men and women will be able to follow Jesus Christ. Superpower. Jesus Christ. Superpower. He will be the one men and women will follow. Number 10. The Bible says that as the as Peter was following the angel, every door, when it saw Peter, it opened by itself. There were four doors. Each door, whenever it would see Peter, it would open by itself. It would open by itself. And even the bronze, metallic, and iron gate, the big one at the gate as you enter into the city, the main gate of prison, the Bible highlights it as a bronze gate. So big, when it saw so Peter, it opened by itself. I was telling the Americans that they did not invent automatic doors. Automatic doors were invented by the Lord which opens by themselves. <laughs> when it sensed that Peter was coming, full of the Holy Spirit, led by an angel of God, the door swung open. And I want to tell you in the name of Jesus, if we pray a fervent, desperate, charismatic prayer, every door, will be open in the name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to 3 says that doors, double doors will be open, that bronze and iron gates will be broken and opened. And I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters, arise and pray this prayer fervent prayer, aggressive prayer. prayer that comes from a desperate heart, a prayer of desperation. Doors are going to be opened in the name of Jesus. Financial doors are going to be opened. Marriage doors are going to be opened. You are going to marry. Let me tell you, 2022, many, many, many doors are going to be opened. 
Now we are locked down, but Jesus is not locked. Let us arise and pray a desperate, fervent, aggressive prayer, a prayer of desperation. God is going to open doors again for travel, doors for airplanes, doors for buses, doors for jobs, doors for twins and children, doors for education, doors for leadership, doors for church planting, doors are going to be opened in the name of Jesus. You have been locked for a long time. It's time for you now to open in Jesus' name. Number 10, the Bible says that Peter, the angel took him very far and uh, left him in the same place. And Peter said, now I know that the Lord is with me. He has sent an angel to set me free out of this day. So when you pray that prayer, prisons will be opened. Men and men and women who are bound and need deliverance, those that prayer will bring healing and deliverance. And you will never, never be the same again. You will give a testimony like Peter. He said, now I know. You will get assurance, those prayers. We release captives, those prayers. We release assurance, those prayers. We release security, those prayers. We make you give a testimony and say, I know. I now know that the Lord is with me. And number 12, 11, the Bible says that uh, when Peter knocked on the door, the, the apostles did not open for him. They feared that he was, it was a Herod. But the Bible says there was a girl called Rhoda, nine years old. She said, no, it is Peter. We have been praying. They said, you are mad. Your head is not working properly. The girl said, okay. If I am mad, let me go and check. She went to the door and said, who are you? He said, I am Simon Peter. She heard his voice. <coughs> she came and said, it is Peter, it is Peter. They said, no, 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 you have heard his ghost. She said, okay, let me go and open for the ghost. When she opened, behold, it was Peter. So that prayer should be a prayer of faith. It will release the face of Rhoda. When you pray, pray with faith that God is going to answer your prayers. Don't be like these apostles. Some of them, they run and hid under the tables. But have that face of Rhoda that God will answer our prayers. The Bible says, pray and believe that you have already got what has been what you have asked. And so it is a prayer of faith. So you need to pray believing that the God you are praying is not dead. God is not dead. He hears our prayers and he answers them in the name of Jesus who died and rose again from the dead. And number 12, the Bible says that when they saw Peter, they were filled with amazement and joy. So a prayer that sets captives free releases amazement and joy. They were filled with amazement. It will release joy and will release amazement. So I want to challenge you, my brothers and sisters. Let us pray this aggressive, desperate, fervent, militaristic warfare prayer that 
he never gives up, that never fears anybody, that is unstoppable, unshakable, un unmatchable in the name of the Lord. And I tell you, the Lord is going to release amazement and joy. And number 13, the Bible says that Peter gave them a full testimony of what the Lord has done in jail. I pray that 2021 and 2022 will be a time of uh, uh, testimonies of what God has done. And finally, the Bible says that uh, they prayed for, for Herod. And Herod, uh, when he was giving a speech, he was struck dead by the angel of God because the apostles, after he re they released Peter, they prayed the targeted prayer. They prayed for Herod. He died in his robes. And the word of the Lord grew stronger and the church uh, grew stronger. So may God bless you as we begin uh, this session led by Karanga Gordon of Healing and Deliverance uh, because of that uh, aggressive, desperate, fervent, militaristic warfare prayer. Hallelujah. Down 
The seed it has been broken in the name of Jesus. And we say, we declare that God has set you free. Rejoice in the grace of the Lord. May the Lord take you this month. May the Lord take you this week from the land of not enough to the land of more than enough in the name of Jesus. May the Lord take you from the land of not enough to the land of more than enough in the name of Jesus. Is that those who are after, those who are after you we will, will, will say yes, you have a God who is really powerful. May the Lord will destroy every seed eater. Yes, tonight we stand with you. You have been suffering challenges in your marriage. You have been attacked by spirits of uh, the, the, the spiritual husbands. Yes, you have been struggling with the spirit of masturbation. Yes, you have been struggling with the spirit of pornography. Yes, you have been struggling with the spirit of quarreling in your marriage. Tonight, I want to rebuke all those spirits that have, that, that have been invading your marriage in the name of Jesus. I speak to you, evil spirits. Come out and leave that person's marriage in the name of Jesus. I speak to your life tonight that you never, never complain again. May the Lord cause your heart to rejoice from this night. That you rejoice with your husband. You rejoice with your children. You rejoice in your marriage. And the one who has been standing outside there, sending you witchcraft, will never, will never send it again. The witchcraft will never attack you again. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And this, that person who has been witching you, will know you serve a mighty God. We clap for you, Jesus Christ. He has got to listen to the cry. He has got to listen to the prayer of their children. As they, they, are, as they pray to you fervently tonight, and they listen to your word, you have listened to their cry. And I want to speak to them, listening to me, that tonight has been their night of grace in the name of Jesus. They have also been struggling in their prayer life. You want to pray. You are attacked by the spirit of sleep. Yes, you want to pray. Something takes away. Is your mind something steals your attention tonight? I want to be prepared the spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will power on you the spirit of prayer that you pray and you never be dry, you never get dry of words. Yes, you worship God, God will put in your life a new song tonight. I speak to you prophetically that may the Lord give you a new song of worship and prayer. May the Lord give you a new song. Give you a new time for worship and prayer. That your prayer life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, come Holy Spirit. Fill your dear servant with the anointing of prayer. Yes, may the spirit of Daniel come upon you tonight. In the name of Jesus. That you live to pray and worship God. May the spirit of David, a spirit of worship and prayer, come upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. That you never dry your songs. Yes, they will sang for you songs of worship. In, a, in those psalms, he worshiped you for your goodness. Yes, he worshiped you for your, for, your, for your transcendency, for your power, for your works. May the anointing of prayer come upon that person who has been struggling in our prayer life, in his prayer life. That way, your prayer life will never be the same again. We glorify you, Jesus Christ. We worship you, Lord. Thank you for listening and answering the prayer of the saints. We bless you, Jesus Christ. We honor you, Lord. Raise up your voices, you at the same house of prayer, and glorify God and adore him. In your words, we adore you, Jesus Christ. We worship you, Jesus Christ, because there is none like you. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are holy. You are mighty. You are powerful. There is none like you. Be glorified, Jesus Christ. Because you, you, you have listened to our prayers. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Yes, Jesus Christ. We honor you, Lord. Yes, it's not like you.
you. We worship you, Jesus Christ. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus Christ. Receive all the worship. Receive all the honor. Yes, as we sing, as we do that chorus. Adore him. Worship him. Glorify him, his Lord.
Well, but then with us, we glorify Jesus Christ. If you are there, wait for us. Yes, you still wait for Jesus Christ. Thank you for attending with us. God bless you richly and abundantly from his words. May he be your God. Hallelujah. God be the glory. And I want to share with you, briefly our program as we wind up. Glory to Jesus Christ. We want to apologize. I want to apologize on behalf of the team. Especially those who want to worship with us through Zoom. But uh, we were not able to accommodate you because our capacity has been 100. We are very sorry for those who wanted to be on Zoom. Forgive us, but uh, we promise we are going to do our best tomorrow and uh, ensure we at least host uh, 500 people. Please be comfortable to come on, on Zoom beginning on Sunday uh, in our first service. Sunday at 10, p uh, 10 a.m. At 10 a.m., we shall be able to host about 500 on Zoom, but also on Facebook as we pray and believe God for resources to be able to host people on YouTube. But I want to thank God for those who are there with us. And so our program runs this way. Uh, our program begins on Sunday, Sunday at 10 a.m. in the morning for Sunday service but also uh, at 10 p.m. for the hour of breakthrough, and we shall be hosting men and women who are anointed by God who will be speaking to us through Zoom and Facebook, and I know you shall be blessed, and I know many of you are blessed by our brother Miller. And our second Sunday service in the week is uh, on Wednesday, like this one, at 8 p.m. Please take note of our programs. Our week is not going to change, as well as our 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 our, uh, our what our call, it shall be remain until uh, eight until tenth of August. Please, even if you don't get any any message from us, believe God. When you link in, when you, you tap in at the exact time, you'll be at the place of prayer and you'll be blessed. Thank you, friends. Invite others uh, for this service, and I know God is going to bless you richly. Back on the team, I want to give this opportunity. Thank you, Brother Medad, my twin brother, for listening to us. If you are blessed, please clap, raise up your hand and give Medad flowers. Medad flowers are for you. Thank you for attending with us. Thank you for blessing us. As usual, we're excited about uh, your love, your care, and that powerful smile. Hallelujah. You can give it to us before you leave. A big smile for this congregation attending with us. Medad, your smile, please. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, in case you want to give a contribution for this ministry, I can see a question from Peace. Thank you very much. You can send it through mobile money 0782 363175. We can receive your contribution as we expand this ministry. Let me say the number again, 0782 36 3175. But also 0782 429905. We can get your contribution and uh, as we expand this ministry. God bless you, Richard. Thank you, Bob. Can't see you for attending with us. Thank you, Mahalas, and many others. Have a good night. Enjoy your sleep. Let us
Yesu amgoni sapaze zo human understanding he in your hearts my brother as you continue to serve God and love him and his only son our Lord Jesus Christ the blessing of God the Father Almighty the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you my brother keep you strong in the faith and need us to the, the storms of covid 19 and rock down and many others may that blessing take you through may that blessing enable you to take you through now and always amen, amen. have a blessed night because we serve a mighty god we serve a god who never fails we serve a god who never fails we serve a god who never fails who never fails